I'm Alice of All Trades, and this is another Everyday Let's Play Blade Runner. So, I think I'm gonna go back to the Chinese food place. Which, by the way, I watched Blade Runner The Final Cut just yesterday. Not yesterday to you guys. Your floor number, um, please. Roof. And, um, first of all, this is the elevator and one of the shots. That's the thing, is that they almost all the shots from this are shots from the movie. And I also read a lot of the trivia behind the movie. And like I said in the first one, um, I made a joke that uh, Blade Runner 2049 is better than Blade Runner, and I did not mean that joke in the slightest. Blade Runner is a better uh, movie than Blade Runner 2049. 2049 is really pathetic, actually, story-wise. And, um, yeah, uh, I still believe that Deckard is a rapist. And I actually, it seems like all of the best parts of that movie were ideas that Rutger Hauer or uh, Harrison Ford came up with, not um, Ridley Scott. And then, of course, the artist behind a lot of this had a huge amount of impact on um, the look and all of that. I feel like there has to be something going on here. Something more than what I just... what all I got done. Apparently the hats in the movie are mostly from Pier 1. They're just baskets they put on, upside down on their heads. <coughs> Sorry about that. Ah. This from your place, isn't it? Could be. Chopped it come from Yoshi's restaurant supply. Okay. How long has that chef worked for you? Zubin? Just month. Superior chef makes all kinds of new suits. Hmm. What's real fresh tonight? Special shipment of Toro just arrived. I fix you right up. No one else. Clean as a whistle. You're Prince, Howie. Oh, I got food. See you later, Howie. Okay. Let's go try hunting to that. Employee again. Well, I got some more information this time. But I read all of the trivia on the original Blade Runner. All of it. And this is what I have to say about um, the big question of Blade Runner is that it is ambiguous. In the first movie, Blade Runner, 1982. 1982. It's ambiguous. And same thing with Train Spotting, who's the father's uh, father of the baby. And people have been talking about those two questions for decades. And then in the last, I think it was the last five years, both of them got sequels that answered those questions definitively. And I think that's really stupid, because leaving it ambiguous forever means that we are forever talking about it, whereas telling us a definitive answer means we stop talking about it. And that's just stupid. I know Scott said what his answer was, but he waffled on that before filming, during filming, after filming, some of his um, support for his answer is honestly pretty good support. But at the same time, Ford and Howard, the way they talk about the answer and what they consider to be the correct answer, and considering Ford's per performance throughout the movie, I'd say Scott's wrong. Um, because that is, as they put it, not the movie they were making. And I actually agree with them from having watching it again more recently. Um, what Ford was doing on screen supports 
his answer. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, he's the actor, he's the one who's doing the internal emotional content and, and thoughts. And I'm not talking about the narration. Um, so of course he's, he knows, he's performing it with an answer in mind. And that answer is correct. And I have to agree with them both that it's a better answer. Because for one thing, it's more like Philip K. Dick's actual novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? It's, it's closer to the actual theme of the novel, which I think is rather important. It makes it a much better adaptation for it to be Ford and Howard's way. And by the way, I just found out yesterday that Howard died back in July. <laughs> for some reason, it really upset me that I didn't hear about it until just now, especially considering that Observer was getting all these reviews recently, which I have that game. Maybe I'll do that game. I liked Worker Hower. He was a good actor. I'm done talking film criticism. Stick around. I might want to talk to you later. I don't get to ask him any more questions. Damn it. Okay. Let's see if this gave me any new locations, then. Why is he running? That was weird. It did not. I still have... Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna find anything in the apartment. There's no other way of, like, showing more map, right? Just wanna make sure I'm not doing something stupid. Let's go to the police station, I guess. Maybe I'll load up more information into the mainframe, and maybe I'll get some more information in the mainframe. I don't know. What's hilarious is that the police station is just LA's train station. And it's what is here, that long-ass area I have to walk. <laughs> just to get to Brian's office. Uh, to not talk to Brian. Roof. Laboratory. Mainframe and shooting range. <laughs> Uploading personal clue database. Downloading mainframe clue database. Clue database transfer complete. Do I have anything new? Oh, I do. Ali Lee's interview. That's what I just... How long has that chef worked for you? Yeah. Zubin? Just month. Superior chef. Makes all kinds of new suits. I have anything to look at in the Esper. Should Lock I go up. in the shooting range? Laboratory. Well, let's go to the lab and see if this guy has anything for me. Anything else? Zip no. man, try me later. <laughs> Laboratory, mainframe, and shooting range. If the psycho has anything to say. You keeping busy, pal? Nah, the place has been pretty quiet the last couple of days. That reminds me. So I mentioned last time that he says pal like he's saying motherfucker. And re-watching the movie recently, I was like, they, they say pal a lot in the movie too, and it's just the same, they say it the same way. They say pal like motherfucker. <laughs> like it's an insult. It's fucking hilarious. It's awesome how much they actually grabbed Ground floor. from the, um... The movie. Got anything to say to me? You keeping busy, pal? Please leave me alone. <sighs> My migraine's acting up. 
Does anyone have anything to say to me? <laughs> oh, that guy's back. Lock up. <laughs> on again. Just go everywhere. <laughs> and oh, one hilarious thing is that these offices are still there. Um, and they're actually used as offices in the train station by the actual transportation uh, office, you know, department, and I think that's freaking hilarious. They're like, okay, fine, you didn't film there, and you didn't build your offices there, but, uh, leave the offices when you're done. And also, um, the Bradbury building is a real building, really called the Bradbury building, in LA. That's where Sebastian lives, by himself. And I was, when I was watching it, I was like, I know this building. I've seen this building before. I've seen this building countless times. I know I have. I have to have. So, I looked it up, and I'm, and it says it's in it's in a bunch of movies I've seen, Chinatown being one of them, but it also mentioned that it's in countless TV shows. And I was like, I am absolutely certain that it's in an episode of Star Trek, Star Trek Next Generation, and Quantum Leap. That it it is in fact in the credit opening credits of Quantum Leap. Because it's the one where he's playing a noir detective. He literally jumps into a PI. It's a good episode. It's um, obviously playing on a th on on the genre. You know how they do. It's it's a good episode. If you've not seen that one, you should watch it. In fact, if you've not seen Quantum Leap, you should watch it. Sorry to bother you, Lieutenant. I was just checking in. Well, get back out there. Those reps ain't retiring themselves. Yeah, suicidal targets would make my job a lot easier. Everybody's got a job, kid. What the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> That's me. My eyes all itchy. Just keep going in your slow, sedate pace. I'll just take a nap. Take your time, McCoy. Like, Blade Runner is not one of my favorite movies. The story is pretty bleh. But, um, it's not a great cast with wonderful performances. Some good themes to it, too. That are kind of buried under its iconography. But it's... Yeah, it's worth Main watching. Roof. And Blade Runner 2049 is not worth watching even slightly. Like, even with Ryan Gosling's amazing performance. It's not really worth your time. Can't believe he's making the Dune movie. Not Ryan Gosling. Dennis Villanueva. Nueve? Of course he's making Dune, because Ridley Scott left the Dune movie to do Blade Runner. Which I. Which I don't understand why these two are known for their imagery when. They're both based on novels, and novels are not a visual medium. They're written in prose. They're they're designed in prose. So why are they? Why do they have to have a certain look to them? Where the hell am I supposed to go? Is it locked? No. He just wasn't going to go over there, apparently.
still can't do anything. I feel like that one image, I'm supposed to find something in it, and I don't know what. It kind of drives me nuts. Maybe I should get back on my Esper. Look around some more. Is this is the shot? Well, there's only one place left to go. I have four locations. This is the problem with point and quick adventures. Go to all these places and figure it the fuck out. I just finished playing some Deponia. That's <laughs> probably a mistake, huh? To my apartment. I'm just wasting gas. <laughs> or whatever fuel. Which apparently that um, Asian lady's taking a birth control pill. That's what that is. Well, at least I get to see my dog. You've been expecting something to change in one of these places. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the slowest walker. Number, please. McCoy, 88F. 88. So is Thank he in you. the same apartment as Deckard? Is that the idea here? Yes, hi. Who's the best dog in the whole world? She is. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Okay, I have an Esper, so... Run sitter, crime scene. Oh my god, there was something here. A sushi menu from Howie Lee's. Give me a hard copy of that. Oh, I'm annoyed. Is this picture of a monkey? Yeah. That's a llama? No, it's a gazelle, isn't it? That's a monkey. Hmm. This is a parrot of some kind. Can't quite see its head. this Is it a shadow it must not be important for me to zoom in that much and get nothing out of it It's like a light switch, isn't it? Why are you suddenly not doing anything? Okay. I just don't look over there. I wish I didn't know what Run Sitter was doing.
Kind of box. You need to tell me what it is. No, it's just the. Isn't it? Why? Yeah, it's her. I can't. Oh, hey, there we go. Hello there, Lucy. Give me a hard copy of that. I did not recognize that as a human being back there. Well, replicant, maybe. <laughs> back there. That might be everything. For one thing, that line is right there. But hey! <laughs> I figured some stuff out. That's just a fancy bottom. Crime scene. I found things so quickly on this one that I didn't bother looking at other things. I might as well do that. What is with this? It looks really weird. It's just a fancy... okay. Something or other. Okay then, don't! Why are you ignoring every single press I make? <laughs> what is he? This isn't going to show me what he's looking at. Apparently not. Just his freaky hand. Is that Lucy? Mm -hmm. 
Runsitter crime scene. I don't think there's anything else for me to find in here. Okay. Um. Alright. <laughs> I did get some stuff done. I found some things. More pictures. Parts of the pictures. Alright. <laughs> Like, share, subscribe, click the bell, follow me on Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, join my Discord, buy some merch at my shop at cafepress.com slash trades. Sorry, I'm still trying to think. Follow me on Patreon so I can make more videos like this, and thank you to my current patrons, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, I have to do some research. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs>